Hello. Let's have a discussion about quantitative analysis of organic compounds. We will discuss in this short video about the estimation of carbon and hydrogen by Lebig method. Here it's very simple organic compound which contains carbon and hydrogen is taken and heated over copper oxide. Whatever the carbon is there in the organic compound that is converted to carbon dioxide, hydrogen is converted to water as we were discussing in the detection of elements. So organic compound which contains carbon and hydrogen when sent over copper oxide turns into carbon dioxide and water. These two are passed through anhydrous calcium chloride anhydrous calcium chloride and next through KOH solution this is given in a U tube this is given another U tube the gases are passed like this so let's say calcium chloride mass is some x grams and when these two gases are coming that is water and carbon dioxide water is completely absorbed here and then it is passed through this one where KOH is there carbon dioxide is absorbed here because carbon dioxide is acidic in nature KOH is basic in nature so it is absorbed anhydrous CaCl2 needs water so it absorbs moist so let's say this is x grams of CaCl2 you have taken and your y grams of KOH you have taken due to the absorption of water the mass of this tube will be increased let's say that is a gram now a minus x will give you the mass of water if you consider the mass of the tube after co2 absorption is b then the mass of the carbon dioxide will be b minus y initial is y then b this is experimental data but for you they will give you direct things percentage of carbon is equal to weight of carbon dioxide by weight of organic compound into 12 by 44 into 100 remember this formula that's enough similarly percentage of hydrogen is equals to weight of water by weight of organic compound into 2 by 18 into 100 fine so how these principles work I'll give you with a simple example you see let's say x grams of organic compound is there which is converted to y grams of CO2 so percentage we want to calculate so how much it is going to be how many grams of CO2 is there if 100 grams of organic compound is there 100 y by x right grams of carbon dioxide but we want to calculate the percentage of carbon not carbon dioxide this is percentage of carbon dioxide in carbon dioxide if you have 44 grams of carbon dioxide it contains 12 grams of carbon if you have 100 y by x gram of carbon dioxide it contains how much 100 y by x into 12 by 44 so this was the formula 100 12 by 44 y is weight of carbon dioxide x is weight of organic compound so simply we have written here percentage of carbon is equals to weight of co2 by weight of organic compound into 12 by 44 into 100 Similarly, percentage of hydrogen is equals to weight of water by weight of organic compound into 2 by 18 into 100. This is even useful in your stoichiometric calculations also. Now the conditions, the problems are if carbon and hydrogen only present, this is wonderful method, like big, like big method is superb. If nitrogen, sulfur, halogens are present, we know about these elements whether they are present or not. If these are present, Lebig method is not good. But we don't have any other method. We have Lebig method only, so we need to make some changes. 
what changes are there for example if nitrogen is there nitrogen is generally converted into nitrogen oxides like no no2 type of oxides these are found so in the lebig experiment we need to use copper gas the copper gas will reduce nitrogen oxides into nitrogen okay if you want a balanced equation you can write two cd o type so the intention of using copper gas is to convert nitrogen oxide into nitrogen if nitrogen is there this is not absorbed by the koh or it is not absorbed by anhydrous CaCl2 so no problem with this if you are using as it is NO or NO2, if NO2 is acidic in nature, NO2 will be absorbed by the KOH because this is basic in nature. So it should not be used as it is. It must be converted into nitrogen gas and that job is done by copper. So copper gas must be there in the Leibniz experiment in order to avoid the nitrogen compounds. Similarly, if sulfur is present, sulfur will be converted into again sulfur oxides to avoid this problem we generally go with lead chromate this lead chromate is added the advantage of using lead chromate is it absorbs this compound into lead sulfate lead sulfate is pbso4 which is stopped here so lead chromate using of lead chromate the advantage of this is lead chromate will stop the sulfur in the form of lead sulfate pbso4 this is one advantage otherwise this lead chromate you are using along with copper oxide what is the role of copper oxide copper oxide converts the carbon into carbon dioxide even that job is done by lead chromate also lead chromate can also convert copper carbon into carbon dioxide so it can do the job of copper oxide so along with copper oxide you add some lead chromate the advantage of that is if any sulfur is there that sulfur will be converted to lead sulfate so lead sulfate is stopped here if halogens are present then if halogens are present then silver gauge is used if silver gauge is used as we know silver reacts with uh, halogens to form silver halides by forming this you can comfortably remove because these are non-volatile so they are not passing over the koh and there is no problem